Hey, everybody. Just a quick note about this episode. Uh, our final season boss fight was actually a lot longer than we initially intended it or thought it might be. So it has been split up to two episodes, uh, 342 and 343. Um, you're going to listen to 342 right now. So uh, enjoy and check back next week for the conclusion to the epic boss fight. Bye. Everybody, and welcome back to Goblets and Gaze. This is season three, episode 42. No, yes, I think it's 40, uh, 41. Two. No, yeah, yes, 42, 41. I mean, that is, the, that is the answer. Yeah, it's 42. Yeah. That, it is the I answer. just wrote it down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, uh, I should know because I did 41 this morning. Um, but yes, uh, I'm Aubrey. I'm a GM. I use she her pronouns. I am going to toss it over to my players to introduce themselves in this quite possibly penultimate episode of the season uh, and answer tonight's question. Does your character feel like they're prepared for what is about to happen? Uh, and we'll start at the top of the list with you, Aki. Hello, I'm Aki. My pronouns are she, her. And I will be playing Astrea Bashar Chloris, who also uses pronoun. Oh, what? 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 <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? What the it's fuck happened? It's what? Huh. Huh. what did I even say? Uh, Astrea also uses pronouns. <laughs> yeah. It spreads every day. Um, yeah, she sure as hell does use pronouns, uh, specifically she, her. <laughs> And uh, she is our quadruple bard princess dragon summoner who needs more sleep, dates with her girlfriend to actually break her father's curse. And um, <clears throat> no, no, she doesn't feel um, prepared. Definitely not as prepared as she'd like to be, because you know that that's that's our scheming lady. That's our that's our plotting princess. Um, so I think if anything, it's like not prepared, but we're gonna do it anyways. That kind of vibe. She's as prepared as she can be for the time being, but totally, totally think she could be more prepared and should be more prepared. Hello, I am Dusty. I use they he pronouns, and I am playing Joanna Sanchez, mom of Mexico, fighter of gods, apparently. And um, the short answer is no, she is not prepared for this. However, she can't think about that because she needs to be. So she's going to continue on regardless. Hello, my name is Ferris and I use she, her pronouns. And I am playing Dumisa, the half hop goblin barbarian and champion of the night who also uses she, her pronouns. And I would say she is as prepared as she's going to be, and she is resigned to whatever may happen. Hello, everyone. I am Tick. I use she, she, they pronouns, and today I'll be playing Mero from the Underworld, now with a lot of fake connections and a lot of parental issues. Uh, and the answer is... And I quote from the song from the Tingle soundtrack, Ready as I'll ever be. Yes, good song. Ah, that's on yes, the good song. Good yes, good song. That's playlist. I'm mm. having it playing mentally in the back of my head right now while I think of the question. I'm like, yep, that's, that's it. Out of I'm officially putting it playlist. on now. Oh my goodness. I freaking love that song. Why did I think of this earlier? Hello, I'm Sparlock. I use he, him pronouns, and I play Groon, the flame oracle who uses she, her pronouns. And uh, I think Grun is excited about this. I, I think she's the only one that uh, lacks the knowledge the, about how bad this could go. Hello, hello. My name is Alyssa. I use they, them pronouns, and I am playing Tamsin, changeling wizard Melfi's is she, they pronouns. And I mean, Tamsin wanted to do 
this yesterday, a week ago, a thousand years ago. So uh, <laughs> I think the question is not prepared. If she's ready to go. So, but for now, if you want to ask us any questions for our season roundtable, the link to the Q&A doc is in the our show notes also on Twitter uh, and all of that. Ask your questions, anything you want to know about season three, or if you maybe have any uh, questions for beyond season three that I can answer without being spoilers, go and ask them. And then see news, wayward Arcadium, bring your own Mac, escaping Carcosa. All of those are things that, you know, you should go check out. Uh, Escaping Carcosa will be starting at some point in September. I don't have a date, uh, but keep an eye on Ballad of the Seven Dice's Twitter. And I believe that is all the big stuff for me. And I turn it over to my players to uh, shield themselves. Uh, City That Never Dies by Clever Corvids. That's what I'm on. That's what you should know that I'm on. If you don't know that I'm in it playing Darling by now, then then what a what episode you chose to start on wow very interesting choice <laughs> very, yeah. i commend mm. you i mean i mean like i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna like shame you for it my mom loves to read the last page of the book before starting any book so you know that's been my entire life um but just you know these are questions um you're gonna be so confused uh, mm. <laughs> and um that's it for me, I think. Oh, no, no, it's not. And on uh, Friends Who Roll Dice every Saturday from 1 p.m. Eastern to 4 p.m., uh, you can catch me playing Wander as we play Printed uh, Weaver Print. Yeah, Printed Weaver Journey. It's basically like a Soulsborne game, Very but cool. an actual play. Very fun, very exciting. I uh, can't wait to see what the fuck happens next. And we kill the pig. You know, the ultimate enemy in all Soulsborne games. You've got to reach your way up to that moose, I understand. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. Who else has things they want to talk about? I have things. Oops, sorry. I just dropped my switch. Um, I have things. Hello, this is me, Alyssa. I am also on Friends Who Roll Dice on alternate Thursdays playing Camp Carnage, which is a Monster of the Week game. I will also be starting soon um, a quest campaign on Saturdays that is about dragon riders. So that's fun. Always a good thing. Um, yeah. Uh, go buy games from all the people here who make them. And commission art for my artists. Yeah. Give us your money. <laughs> Go to our Patreon. Money. Give us Dinder. money, please. And um, mm -hmm. go to my Twitter where I post cryptic hints about stuff that I'm working on. It's always the best. You should post them directly into my DMs. The day we can announce the, the big things. The day I will, I will go ham. I'll start doing the recap now that I've consumed what was in my mouth. So, last time on Goblins and Gays, I'm pretty sure it was just all combat, wasn't it? We ended up landing at the, uh, basically Nike, sending off all the dragons we need to go, and we fought a fuck ton of Reavers. And a hippo! We were supposed to fight the hippo, but Demisa was very intimidating and just scared it off, and it was like, I'm not- I'm not screwing with that today. I'm gonna- I'm gonna leave and cut my losses. Which is powerful, because we learned Aki is a secret hippo fear. But not so secret hippo fear. And also that the Canadian house hippo is not known by Americans. So, uh, look that up if you haven't seen it before. But, yeah, I'm just 99% sure it was just all violence against a bunch of Reavers as we defeated them as they tried to climb our boat, murder us, and uh, stop us from getting into the wonderful castle. Not, like, missing anything from the beginning, right? Like, I swear it was just all combat. You, you, no, well, all... no, we got there. We had arrived there, so we did some, mm -hmm. like, chatting on the way in. We, we um, some sent chatting. some letters, did not have dreams, um, decided who was going to come with us. There's like nice. 12 of us total, I think. Mm. Yeah, we figured out a few. I know this wasn't the Fred episode. That was like last last episode. Mm. Yep. 
So we had but... a few conversations and mostly violence, but yeah, lots of violence. Um, so yes, you have all sort of headed up through the castle. You can kind of hear fighting all around you. And now is actually the point where you can make out the roars of dragon. I'm not sure how, what everyone else will think of this, but Australia, you definitely see the, um, all the, the, the very human-like statues that are all over. Oh, like, like, like mm-hmm. statue, statue, like very, um, mm-hmm. like the first Narnia movie. Yep. Yeah. Oh, hmm. 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 I, I think as, well, one, they wouldn't, they wouldn't necessarily be human. They would be all gnomes. Mm. Um, and, and, and two, yes. Shreya is gonna start pointing that shit out uh, after like like more than three show up and just go, wow, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh oh yeah. The reason why I left solely in the first place. Oh yeah, hmm, mm. Mm. more mm. panic if anything, or, or yeah. not really panic, like sweat, like mm. you know, you know. We're gonna fight a probably a god. I don't think I need to um, be confronted with my father's morality in my hands immediately. Um, but but oops, oops, that's all happening. Oops, it's right there. Oops, that's gonna happen. It's gonna happen soon. Oh, so I'm sweating. Yeah, very very soon. Um, and you will all eventually get up to what was probably the great hall at some point um and sort of you arrive in a way that to your left is further into the castle what was probably the throne room where you definitely remember seeing the idol in one of your visions and then to your right is sort of like outside to the actual island itself and looking you can see Uh, all of these dragons and people tussling with all of these reavers and various sea creatures. There's probably three or four giant crabs like you fought before uh, and all sorts of various other things. There's a lot. And sort of as this goes on, uh, the dragons that you've brought with you, uh, they all sort of share a look. Uh, A couple of them break off to help everyone else. Uh, so leaving you with Kite and Rex to go to your final confrontation with. And this is where I ask, do you walk into the throne room? Not yet. <laughs> we can prepare a few things before we walk directly in. All right. I'm definitely going to prepare like an inspired courage plus a lingering comp and stuff like that. Actually, no, Spire, if I, wait, how many actions do we have? This is very important. I will say you have less than a, like, you should probably enter rather soon, but nothing is forcing you to enter. So like anything you can do in under a minute. Oh my God, because if you're gonna give me that much time to prep, I can do it. Because like I said, nothing is rushing you in there. It's you are all standing before this door. I just want to cast Fleet Step. Yeah, go for it. I want to activate my wings so I don't have to do that inside. I pull out two scrolls. Uh, One I use to cast Tongues on myself, and for the other, I touch Joanna's shoulder and cast Fly on her. Okay, for Grin, let's do... Um... Order is important-ish. Not that important. Um, Fly, Fleet Step, and Haste on Doomy in that order. We're just charging up behind the door, like gathering our power. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's what you do. What you do in an RPG is all the time to cast all your buffs so you don't have to spend your first round in combat doing it. Literally, literally, I was doing this like five minutes ago for a completely different thing. Um, (laughs) Yeah, like, fuck, resist energy, man. Didn't think that would be important (laughs) until it was. Um, Okay, in this order, 
Inspire Courage, Harmonizing, Spired Events, then Lingering Calm, so I'll roll for that. And if I still have some sort of time, I will cast Fly on Rosalite. Do um, Fly first, because it lasts five minutes. That's true, that's true. Do I have time for these, or should I, or, or do I gotta, because that's technically like what, five? I, I will. I will allow it. Okay, if you go allow it, I'm gonna yeah, accept I mean, it. Yet, yet again, all nothing of them together is... less than like thirty seconds. Are thirty yeah. seconds? I know, it's... and also I'm doing it for the meme because we'll literally kick the door down and it'll be like somebody wants. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, the only thing I need to state is, Joanna's mm-hmm. gonna have her shield like buckled, but is gonna have the gloaming shard in her left hand, and then the other sword in her right hand. Oh, I'm also okay. last second casting stone skin on Marrow. On uh, Rocky. Yes, must protect your child. Return to origins. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do want to just have the call the sign code as well, so I can be like a little bit stealthy, but I can't believe hmm. it. Casting stone skin on someone in a building full of stone statues that used to be people is probably not going to be a very pleasant thing for a straight to wash, but it's fine. Yeah, you no, that's, in. I just I just refuse to look, that's all. Just, I'm looking just, away. You, you do uh, not perceive. Mm-hmm. So just check it. We haven't had time to refocus. No, you will not have had time to refocus. Um because that's a ten minute thing. And I can not remember what is uh, how do you say? I- is it five second or six second rounds? Uh, rounds are six seconds. Six seconds. Yep. Okay, I just can't remember. So, okay. Uh, since I have time, actually, especially since I've been pasted, uh, I'm going to also go into Dread Marshall stance. Um, I rolled intimidation for that. And got an A36, which passes my class DC, uh, but it is not a critical. But it does mean that if anyone is within 10 feet of me and you critically hit an enemy, um, you get to frighten them and also you get to add uh, damage, regardless of if you crit or not. Okay. Uh, to you get a plus two damage. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, for a lingering comp, I rolled a 41. Yeah, it, it would have been a, um, the, uh, the target was a 32. Yeah, that's my well <laughs> Yeah. It's okay, we can take, we can take a 41. Yep. Okay. Uh, I take it now that you have done everything to prepare. Mm-hmm. Well, so... Who is going to be pushing these giant doors open into the throne room? Probably me. Yeah. Can I do it Aragorn style? Just just with both hands, push both doors open. Mm-hmm. Looking a little little um, drenched from the beach by, a little like mm-hmm. bedraggled, but like in a sexy way, yeah. Yeah. Incredibly sexy way. Yeah. It's more impressive from the front, but I feel like Australia still gets a good show in the back, so it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. all that matters. So if I could get a, an inspiration, it would be <laughs> this, but I cannot. Mm-hmm. Um. So you push these doors open, revealing the throne room. You see the steps that lead up from almost where you are. In front of you is sort of like a jade statue pointing back towards the throne. Backwards near where the throne is, you can see these two giant creatures. They appear all kind of sea serpent-like as they almost like hover in the air. Uh, and as they breathe out, you know, you can kind of see the frost that comes from them. And then standing in front of the throne, where you can see the idol is Iktar. You know, a little bit taller than you thought he'd be. You know, he's probably like close to nine feet tall. Uh, and, and yeah, we make the joke about looking like Davy Jones. Uh, 
very, very similar. It is, this is a person who has lived in the sea, not just at sea, for hundreds of years. You can kind of see where, like, barnacles have grown over him, uh, and he sort of seems permanently wet. Uh, and he looks at all of you. Hmm. If he does, doesn't say anything. In one hand, he hefts a very, very large cutlass. And in the other hand, he hefts what was probably a large portion of a, of a mast at one point, just sort of over his shoulder. I guess that means he amassed a lot of weapons. Yes, he did. <laughs> uh, and for that pun, we're rolling initiative. Fuck you, <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to roll it in a minute anyways. But he doesn't even seem to be in the mood to talk. All he says is, come on, show me what you got. Uh, and as, as Kite and Rex enter the room, you watch with sort of almost a quick flash of light as they change from human to dragon. Kite, you see this very, very large red dragon. And then Rex, you see the magma dragon. Uh, and, you know, as you look at it, he's dripping magma just from his mouth and sort of is like steaming a little bit when it hits the water on the floor. <laughs> Not funny. Yes. Um, I would like to use my battle guide. <laughs> Upon rolling, did we get two net twenties there? Yeah, I did. Beautiful. Uh, I rolled a thirty-five to demoralize with my battle cry. So we begin the first round of combat, and yeah, it is one of the ice Linorms' turn, and you watch as. It sees all of you, and it is going to... What is its speed looking like? Oh, yeah, because it's flying. Um, it's flat? It's flying. Oh, fuck you. And for its first action, uh, because it is a 100 fly speed, <laughs> it will fly across... Uh, putting itself in front of all of you uh, so for its big, first action. Man. <laughs> it oh no! Massive. Yeah. Oh my god! It's a three foot cone. Uh, and it opens its mouth and unleashes a blast of ice at all of you. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so reflex or fortitude? E reflex. We all got plus ones to those. Wait a minute. Uh, and I will tell you all the DC. Uh, the DC is 38. What's the yeah, bonus from the... Only what plus type? one. Uh, circumstance, I think. You get it? I got a 39. <laughs> That's a 34 for me. <laughs> Sorry, it's a status bonus. Mm -hmm. Status bonus, okay. Jeremy um, Tamsin. Um, Tamsin does not. And actually, let me, re let me rephrase something. It's not a blast of ice. It's a blast of freezing viscous ooze. Ew. That's not so the much fucking worse. slime again. Cold boogers? Really? No. Oh, I'd rather I, the ice it, damage. Um, I'm I gonna that funny. use Whoa. my uh, hero point on that because I got like idea. a six. That's a one for the peanut gallery. Um, I saw that. Jesus. Also, Ooh. I cast scintillating safeguard as a reef action. If a reaction. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so Estrella got a 34, which is a, just a fail. Um, mm -hmm. Rosalette, I think, will pass. Just one second. Um, what was the DC? Uh, the DC is a 38. Okay, Rosalite just passes, like, 38 mm. on the, on the die. On the, well, as the total, not on the die. <laughs> what am I rolling, then? <laughs> so, uh, if you passed, you will take 28 cold damage. If you failed, you will take 56. And if you critically failed, you'll take 112. Rune! Rune! Uh, okay. And so... Everybody except for um, mm. uh, Jeremy's wielder and the baby Hampton? dragon has resistance 10 against this damage. Thank you, Groon, for my life. Mm -hmm. How's your life looking, though? Um, but also, there is more. Uh, uh -huh. Anyone who failed the check is now immobilized by the freezing goo uh, and must succeed at an escape check or have an ally assist you, uh, DC 34. Rune, you're still up, right? Uh, what was the damage again for a critical fail? 112. Okay, so only 102. That's not too bad. <laughs> Wait, what you at, Rune? What you at? Don't make me meta game. Like 47. Oh, okay. I'm at, I'm at, I'm at 67. <laughs> we're, we're good. Ah! But I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm stuck! Wait, I'm on a flying dragon. Am I still stuck, or am I just stuck to her? You're stuck to her. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's just a seatbelt. That's just consider it's just considerateness. A Wait, so the I'll say that you're fly... stuck to her. Wait, are the people that can fly stuck then, or no? Uh, I will- doing this as you starting on the ground, you have not lifted off into the air yet. Pain. Yeah. Oh, right, because Rosalite crit. Okay. Yeah, Rosalite mm -hmm. is fine, because Rosalite crit. Or succeeded. <laughs> Regular if you succeed, succeed, yeah. if you regular succeed, you are not immobilized. Is, Only if you fail. Was, was that a basic one? So like a crit? It's yeah, it's a basic. Okay, cool. Mm. Uh, and let's see. And you are all super, super lucky because I just rolled a four for when it's breath weapon recharges. There's a whole second one. Well, we're not. <laughs> also a god. Like. <sighs> Lucky is not the word I would use yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Astrea, it is now your turn. Well, everything is still going. I, I forgot to ask. Am I, um, because I, I should, I always got to ask, am I also taking Rosalite's other damage? Um, no. No. Okay, cool. Uh, that's, that's good. Uh, cause if not, oh, I'd be, I'd be threading by here, you know? So, uh, let's see. So this is not exactly the most safe place to be at right now. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to first give my an action to, to Rosalite so we can just yeet out of here. Yeah. Um, and, and we're just going to move around. And then um, immediately afterwards, I will cast Time Beacon uh, once I'm at a safer location. And that's going to be my routed destination. I'll put a marker on the... Um, where, on the area where I I choose to leave it, but what y'all see is Estrella just takes out her lip gloss, and we're gonna mark, <laughs> gonna put like a little little glittery pink heart, uh, like on a on one of the fucking columns or something, um, for partial cover, you know, and that's where how she marks um, time begin, and for her last action. Could I attempt, like, uh, some sort of recall knowledge on the lin linworms? Uh, dragon lore. Well, I do have dragon, dragon lore. lore. They're, they're like wyverns, so they, I would consider them under dragon lore. Dirty 30. Dirty 30, you can ask a question. One question. 
What are they weak to? Their weaknesses are fire and cold iron. I point to Groom and I go, they're weak to fire. <laughs> and and that will be like my whole turn. And, and, and now I'm gonna move for the map. Well, oh, cold iron. I think I hold up my fists because I think they count as cold iron now. <laughs> Oh, Mero, yeah. I understand you are made out of dirt and currently covered in stone, but I don't know if you're also metal. Well, I'm about to find out. Out of character, mechanically, my fists do count as cold iron. <laughs> I can punch with the power of metal and dirt and stone. Oh, I, I just realized Rosalite will have another action, because I'm not going to use everything to fly around with. You know, and actually, no, fuck it. I will use everything to fly around with, and this might be a detriment. <laughs> so yeah, I'm good. I'm done. Iktar is going to spend... Let's see. Um, so, for his first action, um... What is he gonna do? Uh... His uh, actually, actually, he is just going to spend all three of his actions to cast a uh, solid fog on the area he is in, uh, and thus uh, this functions as an obscuring mist uh, and difficult terrain. So anything within this circle right now is obscured. Right? And it is now Kite's turn. So you watch as this red dragon flaps its wings uh, and is going to fly directly at the Lenore. Yeah. Despite being, these, these lid arms are pretty massive, as you can see by the tokens. Uh, it is almost like double the size of Kite, who is an adult dragon. Uh, and the lid arms are about 20 feet up off the ground. Um, so, Kite is, for her second action, going to strike out uh, with is actually just going to, uh, rather than, well, no, for the last two actions is, uh, going to cast, upcast, burning hands at the dragon, the, the little arm. And unfortunately they pass, but they're still going to take some damage. Okay. And now it is the second little arms. So the second Lenorm is going to spend two actions to move over here by the statue. Oh my god! No! Stay away! To be fair, there's a giant dragon right in front of it. I feel like that hopefully is its target, not you, fingers crossed. Well, that's again, we're in range of the cone. Again. It had, spent, it, had spent, together. it had spent two actions to do this. Um, oh, so I can't breathe. Can't like, breathe. another, another, okay, thank fuck. Can't stay, breathe like, all, actually. Stay, stay the <laughs> fuck away from me, okay? Um, Australia. Heads no. or tails. <laughs> um, <laughs> tails for dead ass. Tails. Okay, right, then it whips out at Rex with its tail. <laughs> Please take the bigger target. Uh, and that is going to hit Rex. You watch as this tail just whacks Rex uh, really hard across the face, and you watch as some of like the lava, you know, that uh, you know sort of seems to just hat at all times goes flying. Uh, and like hits part of the wall and sort of like eats through. 
Yes, hello, it is me. Uh, Tamsin is going to... If I recall knowledge, can you tell me, like, if I ask about immunities, will you tell me spell immunities, too? Like, it's immune to mental effects or whatever. Yeah, if you asked about okay. immunities, that would also cover, like, spell immunities. Okay, cool. Awesome. Then I'm going to roll Dragon Lore on these buddies. Hmm? That is a... Oh, uh, 35. 35? Yeah. Um, so, for the immunities of the Linorm, uh, you have Cold. They're immune to curses. They're immune to being paralyzed and immune to anything sleep-related. Okay. I believe that this is not a curse. I am going to go ahead and cast Warp Mind on the buddy who is in combat with Kite. So make me a will save, please. DC 32. Uh, 32. No, does that mean you beat it? You've passed? Uh, yeah, it meets and beats. Uh, okay. So it just regularly succeeded. Does okay. anything happen if it regularly succeeds? Yes. So it spends its first action on the next turn with the confused condition. Oh, which does mean they're flat footed, though. So, shout out to my melee buddies. Um, and then I am going to go ahead and move a little bit away from this cluster of friends. By I move, I mean Jeremy moves. And that's my turn. Okay. Mero. Okay. So, uh... I feel like I need to escape because I'm frozen to the ground. So what check mm -hmm. is that? Uh, that is an athletics or acrobatics check. Uh, and remember, uh, escape is also uh, will increase your multiple attack penalty. Okay. Uh, you said the DC was like 38, right? 34. 34. 34 to escape from uh, the, the uh, you know, the ooze. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to attack this thing this turn anyway, so, um, I am going to use my first dash to try and escape. That is a 39, so I think I'm good. 32 is the DC, me. so you should be fine. Yep, I so want you, to you, you, manage, you manage to get out of the icy ooze. Um, okay. Yeah, you have two actions remaining. Okay, for my second action, I'm going to do math. And uh, using Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to move 30 feet in the air and 40 feet in this direction, which is a total of 50 feet. So I go there, yeah. And for my third, I, I can't mark that I'm in the air, so I'm just going to keep a note of that. And for my third action, I am going to uh, activate um, Wildwind Stance in the air. Grun, it is now your turn. Um, okay, so... Are they within 40 feet of each other? No, they're in 50 feet of each other. Ah, uh, that gets rid of my highest damaging ability, like, possibilities. I have to do a quick measure. There we go. That gets everybody. So first action, I will uh, cast Sunburst. Sunburst? Okay, what does that do? It does 6, 8d10 fire damage with a okay. DC 32 basic reflex save. Okay. All right. Well, that is uh, unfortunate. Yeah, uh, 43... 39 and 35. So the 43 doesn't take anything. The p regular pass. Wait, it's DC 32, right? Yep. Oh, wait, is that? Nope, she's too far away. Well, um, yeah, so the 43 doesn't take anything. So close, though. The 36 takes 25. The 31 takes. So they all, all are... pass. 
Welp. So they all take 25? Uh, well, the one, the first Iceland arm is a crit pass. Mm. Like, so they take zero. Okay. For my last action. Oh, I need to adjust some things at some point. Um, so for my last action, I will nail the one that hit me with a quickened fifth level fireball. Which, which one? The one that did like 102 damage. Okay. Which one do you think? Well, you said the... the... Uh, and that is a 40. Um, okay, but still gonna take... It's a plus. Um, yeah, so still gotta do 20 plus any weakness. Um, and so it is now Rex's turn. Uh, and Rex is, uh, I think he's actually just, yeah, he's got enough reach already. Uh, Rex is going to, you know, you notice how, uh, you know, his horns, he just sort of puts his head down and is just going to attempt to gore this Linorm with his horn. Uh, and that is going to hit and dealing some damage. And you watch as sort of this viscous uh, blood from the worm, you know, lands on the ground and sort of wherever it hits, it kind of starts hissing and you can kind of see it eat away at the marble. Uh, and then for... Yeah, just barely, he can get both of them. Uh, and for his last two actions with a free action, you watch as, you know, a breath weapon, kind of a little different, watches as he spews magma at both these lin arms. He gets an extra plus one in damage. <laughs> yeah. Are you uh, and I need to make their saves. I'm out of range, right? I am in the air. Uh, yeah, you are out of range. Am I in range? I'm about to say this bitch. Uh, you, I did it in a way. You're, okay, he's not you. going to hit any of you. Yes, please don't. I literally cannot <laughs> can't take it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think it's funny if this guy just spews lava and it just directly right. under Marilyn and they like, put their feet up one a little success, bit. One like, success, one failure. Uh, but because Rex used his free action called Volcanic Purge, he gets to add an extra... F all, they will all take 46 persistent fire damage. Let's yes. go. Rex, 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 Rex. Um, and this, uh, his breath weapon deals 96 fire damage and 4d12 bludgeoning damage. Ah! <laughs> Please kill it. Violence, violence. I'm so glad we brought the fire related dragons with us. I was worried for half a second because water got. But this is, this is fine. <laughs> And that is all of Rex's actions. And when will he get his breath weapon back? Three rounds from now. Okay, so real first action now, because that one happened ages ago, uh, is I'm going to try to hoist out of some, the frozen boogers. Okay, uh, let's see. There is a thing for it. Um, so it is a uh, an action called Force Open. Yeah, I'd like to do that. Mm -hmm with uh so um do you have a crowbar or anything that would be good to pry with me hang on i got a javelin i have more vandal i have a storm hammer i have a grappling hook and a box full of hobbies i have a shovel i, I mean I'll, if, if you want to use the shovel i don't allow it it's sticking, it's probably sticking out of Joanna's bag. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just see it and pull that out real fast. Mm -hmm. And then I need you to make an athletics check. DC 34. Huh. 34! 
34. Let's green go. is now free. Oh. Okay, great. Um, so Green's out of that. I'm just gonna leave her there because I don't think she wants to come with me. Um, I'm going to rage. As a byproduct of my rage, I'm going to Spirit's Wrath, the Lindworm that is um, fighting Kite. Um, so let me roll that attack. Uh -huh. That's good, that's good, hold on. Forty-four to hit that with a ghost. Uh, forty-four. Forty-four is uh, is a success. Not a critical success, though. That's scary, but good to know. Cause that was a natural. That was a natural eighteen on the die. Like what? Anyway, let me roll damage. You stand by for math. You are still within my range, so you do get plus one to the damage and to hit and stuff. As I do for other reasons, so that's gonna be... Yeah, 27 damage with the with the Wisp, so I'm angry. You say seven or 27? Oh, 27, for sure. Um, yep, so that's cool. And then I'm going to use my second action, mildly, uh, to, hang on, double check my distance here. Yeah, 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 more than enough. Uh, to run speedily, because I have my thing on, uh, my speedy cloak business. Mm -hmm. Okay, run up to um, this. Is this dragon in the air? Not dragon, Linderm in the air? like 10 feet off the ground you're like seven so you know with your sword you, you probably hit it okay <laughs> if it's being tall i'm like i will jump on it if i have to um okay so that was action two action three is going to be attacking with orbando and inspire courage to pop one right right now yep 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 Forty-three, which I'm pretty sure hits. Forty-three, yes, that will hit. Radical damage time. Okay, yeah, so that's gonna be forty-two damage. Uh, four of which are acid, and seven of which is negative. Oh, then I can go again, because I'm hasted. So I'm yes, going to attack again. one more action. Yeah, go for it. That's a nat 20. Oh, so 41 with a penalty, alas. But Jesus. 41 hits. It's still a critical hit. Flores. Was it a bludgeoning damage? No. No, it was <laughs> a slashing. I'm looking at the crit for bludgeoning. I was like, oh. <laughs> that, was the, that was the card that I pulled uh, last time. Yeah, I was like, please be budgeting. <laughs> oh man, if I had used my hammer, if only, but it's fine. That would have been hilarious though, because I got, that's what happened to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll take a minus two status penalty to its attack rolls until the end of its next turn. Wait, hold on, let me do more math. Math, 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 math. And, uh, it looks like four of that was acid and 14 of it was negative. And uh, that's me. That's done. Gotta wait nope. on my girlfriend. The end. That's freebie, though. <laughs> Joanna. Okay. Um, Joanna is gonna look to Grun and say, Grun, get behind that pillow or somewhere safe. And then she's gonna throw the gloaming shard at this dragon right here mm -hmm. uh, with the action. Uh, but, but, but I don't know if it has a named action. Uh, but, whatever the gloaming shard does. Yeah, well, let's so be basically, teleport. I throw it 60 feet, uh, mm -hmm. I make a range attack, hit or miss, I still teleport where it lands. So I'm gonna throw it at this dragon's head. 25, that's 40? 40, 40 is gonna hit. Nice. So I think 
Joanna throws it, and then she kind of like disappears, and it's actually just her turn to a shadow following it. And the dagger hits, and Joanna appears holding the dagger, stabs it into the head for 2d4 damage. So 5 plus 7 is going to be 12 damage. And then with her other hand, which has the sword, she's going to now stab with that. Um, let's see. 11 plus 26 is going to be 37, but minus 5, so 32. 32 is not going to hit. Okay, not a crit though, right? Not a crit. Okay, cool. Well, now Joanna is on this dragon's head. And that's my turn. Wait, put a 33 of it? 33 would not have hit. Okay. And that is the end of the first round. And we come back to the top of the second round uh, with the ice Linorm. And uh, um, if someone could remind me. Um, so, oh, uh, Tamsin, the spell you cast on it for confusion for its first action, does it just mean it, you know, just kind of lashes out? Uh, yeah, so it... You are flat-footed, you don't treat anyone as your ally, you use your actions to strike or cast offensive cantrips okay. at a random target. It only has one target near it, so uh, it is going to open those jaws uh, and strike out at Kite. Uh, and those jaws strike true. And Kite needs to make a fortitude save now. Kite is unfortunately too far for any of my bonuses. Because of, uh, it's a Venom. Oh, and she makes it. She does not have to worry about that. But... The jaws do clamp down and Kite does take a bit of damage. Uh, and then, uh, it is going to use its free action to improved grab as it has a hold on kite and just sort of it's almost worm like body like wraps around her uh and she is now grabbed by this thing and it's going to use its second action to constrict and Kite needs to make a fortitude save. Ooh, and Kite is unfortunately not able to make that fortitude save. And you kind of just hear that kind of like crunching uh, and just sort of this bellowing from this dragon. No, Kite, you're all, one of the only redheads Aubrey's allowed. <laughs> the world does um, and... not want Aubrey to have redheads. Kite's still got plenty of health. I would um, hope so. I thought you were going to say it. It's okay. I have plenty of redheads. I'm like, what? You do? Um, I, I do as well. Um, and this is going to try one last time to hit with the jaws. Uh, that is actually going to miss. Kite manages to wiggle away just enough that the jaws just snap on air. And Estrella, it is your turn. Okay. Um, what is the DC again to get out of this frozen boogers? 34. 34, okay. Um, or you can spend an action to give a Rosalite actions, and she can use those to reduce your DC. Ah, uh, one second. Yo, I made it! 34. Yep, I th Ooh, yep because my, my, my buff affects me too. Oh, just on it. Just fucking on it. Ah. Okay, I'm free. I'm free. Also, um, as a heads up, we have another hero point now. Yep. Um, okay, 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 okay. Um, so that's one action to do this, right? Give them to Rosie so we can fly essentially away. Um, and it'll it'll take both of our, uh, like both of Rosie's to, to fly again. Uh, and essentially, we're gonna position ourselves a little farther back, not really behind both Linworms, 
but it's like um, in front of that giant statue, you know, that kind of vibe. We're just kind of, are we out in the open? A little bit, but it's, it's actually surprisingly safer considering they keep fucking walking this way. And that one has a grapple and the other has, is more preoccupied with other people, please. And that way I can get kite. Rune is- it, Rune will not be within reach of my thing, and Tamsin is just out of reach. But, um, major- I've got everybody majority once again, like, within reach uh, of the stuff. Rune is like 15. Oh, no, sorry. 20 away. And, um, Tamsin's only 5 feet away. You can move. One more action. And I'm gonna use that last action to chug a potion. Sounds good. Yep, that's that's how we're gonna be healing myself for now, uh, and that should be my entire turn. Okay, we come to Iktar. Um, let's see. Bro, what the fuck? Don't point at me. So. You kind of hear something that says like a smash, smashing sound. Uh, and then coming from this cloud of fog. He spends his first action to maintain it. Second action, coming from the cloud of fog, just a large chunk of this pillar is thrown at you, Marrow. I have a quick question. What's the range on this? I'm about to Pythagorean theorem calculate real quick. Uh, it is 200 feet. Never mind. <laughs> if like 120 would have been safe, but no, that's 200 feet. That's uh -huh. a whole pillar coming my way. I can't fucking help that. Oh, uh, how does a 41 sound? That does sound like an unfortunate hit. Luckily, mm -hmm. not a crit. So you're going to take 38 damage, uh, and I need you to give me an acrobatics check. Okay, let me do some math. Is this an aerial acrobatics check? Uh, yes, yeah, so just to stay in the air. Perfect. Okay, I have a little bonus to that. One second, we mm. do the math. Was... Is this physical damage? Oh, uh, yeah, it's a pillar. Yeah, you take 10 less. Yeah, yeah right. All right, let's do uh, acrobatics, and I get a good plus two because I'm in the air. Am I allowed to know the DC or no? Uh, the DC is going to be 34. Okay. That is a 37. 37. You're able to stay in the air. It's a little bit uh, <laughs> a little bit dicey there for a second, but yeah, you're you're in the air. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, the only other person who is within range is you, Estrella. Another chunk of the pillar comes oh, flying no. and it tends to fucking... you. <laughs> oh, no. I'm me trying to do math, you, and then a rock. Hate fucking this. Okay, sorry. What? I'm sorry. Uh, what was it? I I don't think it's gonna hit you. Um, that is a uh, a 31. And it hits. It hits. Uh, yep. technically, it actually doesn't because he rolled in that one. What? <laughs> okay, I'll take that too. I'll take that too. I'll take and that he, too. He doesn't because that do drops it down one. I think it's the first time where it and that one only drops it to a failure. That's oh terrifying goodness. that that was in that one with the multiple attack penalty. That that implies he has a plus 35 to hit. I don't like that. I don't like that either. <laughs> what plus 34 to hit? Oh god, guys. This is great. <laughs> and I, it, I, 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 yeah. Okay, all I'm saying is that it's my, my AC should be about like 31 um, mm -hmm. right now just as a, as a reference because of my own bonus. Yeah. So, like, 33. <laughs> I don't have much for AC. You know, I don't this got is, much for hell. Yeah. This is the second time in Pathfinder I fought an enemy where my AC is equal to their two-hit bonus. This time it's a god, though. The first time we were just very much putting us an opponent we couldn't beat. <laughs> so, I'm um, used to this. So, it is now Kite's turn. Uh, and Kite is going to spend her first action to uh, escape from this grapple. She does have a bonus to that, I'm pretty sure, from me. Oh, yeah, uh, that is a 35, and that is successful, as Kite is no longer grabbed. 
you know, does the thing where the dragon just like, uh, you know, extends the wings, and that is enough to sort of break away. And then Kite will, yeah, nobody's in the way, will rear back and send out a, use, uh, Kite will send out her breath weapon. Just at the Lenorm. Oh, uh, Lenorm, very tricksy. Uh, and then Lenorm got a crit, a, rolled a nat 20. Uh, so Get it's us. It's Lenorm rolled a nat 20 to, she dodged the breath weapon, unfortunately. Never mind, I take it back, don't do that. Yeah. Um, Ross said incorrectly. <laughs> so you watch as I lets out this burst of flame and the Lenorm, it just, moves so quickly. It was it's like wasn't even there. And now roll for Kite's breath weapon. Kite gets it back next round. Yes. Yeah, she kite. missed it's like it's okay. I'm recharging. I'll get it back next time. <laughs> okay. And it is now the other Iceland arm. And so Demisa, you just crit against it. Um Oh, yeah, also, um, for the Ice Lenorum that was earlier, you noticed that they were regenerating. Cool. Oh, no, Both don't do that. Both of them. So Both of them regenerate. Fire did not stop that. Good to know. So the Ice Lenorum is going to open its jaws at Shujimisa and snap out. Does a 36 hit? Yes. Uh, give me a fortitude save. You get a plus one. DC is 37. Oh no. You know what's great? I have a hero. And it's a 39. And it's a, that is successful. Uh, you will take 33 damage and it will use its free action. Wait, 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 don't you have that thing? <laughs> that thing I have... where, like, at a certain level, your successes become critical successes? I'm pretty sure it's just for reflex, mm. but I am double checking as we speak. This, well, it's just for oh, success. Oh, wait, yep. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. I just this, got that. That's why I forgot. This so is it's... a poison effect. It's either you succeed or you don't. Oh. You're welcome. Uh, and then it uses a free action to grab you uh, with its improved grab. So you are now grabbed by it. it. Yep, just gets to do it. Does it hit? Uh, and then it's going to use its second action to constrict you. So I need a fortitude save from that. The DC is 37. Yeah, I can beat that with yeah, 44. You're, you're good. So you will take half damage from this. It's still a crit. Mm. It's still a crit success. For the I reasons take... we have already discussed. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. I forget that. So you take no damage. Um, and, then it's just, yeah. and then it's just going to try again. So roll me one more save. Okay. You still get pluses. The scary part about this, okay, is that this is the thing that I'm legendary in, and I gotta use both hero points on it. Gosh dang! 34. 34? So you're gonna take 44 bludgeoning damage as this ah! thing just squeezes you. 4-4? Four, 4-4. Four? Four, four. Cool. <clears throat> um, actually, when you roll a failure on a 42 check that of deals damage, you have the damage you take. So how about 22? 22 sounds great. I like that better. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Damson, it's now your turn. Okay, what do I have to roll to escape this frozen boogers? Um, technically you're supposed to make an escape check. I will let you sell me on what kind of check, uh, like what you what you are doing and how you were doing it, what skill you want to use. I Maybe mean... Just use athletics or acrobatics, but... I don't think you're trained in either of those. I am not trained in either of those, that is true. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. Technically, you can attempt mm -hmm. to escape from being... I don't know if this actually counts. Being grabbed, immobilized, or restrained using your unarmed attack modifier against the yes. DC of the effect. Yes, <laughs> Which, okay. okay, that is the highest out of my options for anything that would be even remotely reasonable. What was the uh, DC for it? 34. 
34. I have a plus 21. So I need to get. Okay, that's fair odds. Hey, I rolled a 16, so I escape. You escape. <laughs> With my very buff plus zero strength unarmed sure. attack. Yeah, Jeremy helps. Exactly. Uh, and then, Mero, you have good reflexes. How's your health doing? Um, I don't like that question. Is this a direct line attack, by the way? No, it's an area of effect to hit two dragons instead of one dragon and to hit Mero instead of Estrella. Uh, yeah, I fucking <laughs> get it caught in it if it's an area of effect. My reflex is pretty good, and my health is, uh... If I had to put it into numbers, 116 out of 190. But also, you might knock me out of the air, which is bad. Oh, that would be bad. Okay, I don't want to do that. So I will simply fireball so that I do not hit anyone except for the dragon engaged with Kite. And I will do that at a... Yeah, please but... don't fireball me. <laughs> I'll be screwed. You have good reflexes. It would have been fine. I don't have good self-preservation luck. <laughs> fair. That is extremely fair. <laughs> I will... Let's go ahead and... Sixth... No. Level five fireball. So, reflex save. DC 32. Uh, it got a 35. So it's will take uh, half damage. Is it still grappling Kite? Does it get any penalties from that? Uh, no. Kite escaped. Right. I'm like, please fail. That's a lot of damage. Well, hey. it's only half that, so 22 points of damage. 22 points of fire damage. 22 is a theme for tonight, apparently. Taylor Stuff ain't even here, but here she is. Rudy. Okay. Uh, technically, I don't have to, like, move, but I want to get into Estrella's area of effect. So, uh, you are already in the area of effect. Am I, then what's the giant circle around you? <laughs> that's for me to do my moves. Oh, okay. That's yeah. <laughs> so the, damn. I, I don't have the sick. That a circle that you see is only a thirty foot emanation. Tamson, I believe, is at fifty five feet. So like, okay, just behind Tamson is where the sixty goes. My brain turned off for a second, but okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, if it's floating, then I can't actually hit it from where I am without moving, so I'm just gonna floor your blow stunning strike for my first action, and this does count as cold iron, because it's an unarmed attack, even though it's ranged. I love wild one stance. Let's see if I can hit it. It's a plus one from Australia, correct? Yep. It's essentially a plus one to everything, so like, you know, two hit, damage, all that sexy stuff. And we have... Resistance. I got that cost. I'll just, I guess every time you guys been taking damage, just, just minus a couple threes. Uh, that's a 44 to hit. Uh, 44? 44 is going to hit, but it's not a crit. <laughs> so close. It's not flat-footed still, which is unfortunate. It is not. Uh, but let me just check my damage. It is... a number. So that is 13 points of bludgeoning damage that counts as cold iron. And make me a fortitude save while I roll the second attack to pray that I hit again. Best you have like to use a hero point. <laughs> I don't want to stick with a nat one in this Denny's. <laughs> That's not a nat one. Uh, I don't know if that'll hit because it's a 36. Uh, 36. Uh, 36 is not gonna hit. Uh, that's okay. And they rolled a 36 for their fortitude. That is also not okay, but that's fine. Mm. At least it didn't crit fail. Um, well, I don't want to try attack it again because I don't think I'm gonna hit a minus eight. Uh, let's see. You, you hit with one attack. How much damage did you do? Uh, 12. 13, 13. I said 13. Okay, cool. 13 of the cold boy. Uh, let me check something, because if that's within 30 feet, I can just... Okay. Um, 
I may as well just use my other two actions to ring over the ram this thing, because I don't think you're going to hit with an attack, and that's a fortitude save. And hopefully I can do a little bit of uh, dwindling damage. So it's not a high fort save, but hopefully I'll get like half damage for it. Mm. I think it's like 27 or something. Uh, oh, it was a fort save? Yeah. Um, 39. I think that takes no damage then because of the crit success. Never mind. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> That's fine. It's, it's not like I had any better plans for those other two actions, so like it's fine. I tried. And that is my turn. Okay. Grun, it is now your turn. Um, <clears throat> I will. Fourth level two action heal on myself. That's probably a very good idea. What's four times eight? 32. Thank you. Okay, so that's... Oh, goodness. All right. I will also... So that's two actions. For my third action, I have a lot of movement. Uh, plus 30, so that's 55 feet. All right, so that'll bring me right over. Why can't I? Oh, there we go. Right over about here. And that will be all of my actions. Hey, okay. uh, Rex is now Rex's turn. And so Rex is going to start with, he is going to do a uh, two action draconic frenzy on the Linorm. So he will make two claw strikes and then one horn strike against it. Unfortunately missing all of them. Oh, I thought you wanted violence. Learn to hit. <laughs> Uh, do do the NPCs get hero points? Um, unfortunately, they do not. Um, and he is. Unfortunately, that means the Linorm could take an attack of opportunity on him. Oh no, dub. Is this a range? Let me guess. Was it a crit? It was a crit. Yeah, I was thinking. Oh, there they. Yeah. Fifty. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Is this a ranged attack that it's making? Um, no, it's, or it's, it's just got it's, that much reach. It's got that much reach. It's got twenty Damn. feet of reach with its tail. What? Yeah. They're they're I don't huge. like it. I know they're big, but that seems absurd. No, I know um, Ferris, you and I same thought though. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um he becomes stunned one and he will take uh fifty damage. So unfortunately, he has no more actions this turn. You said it was going to roll to attack and I was in my brain like it's going to be a crit, isn't it? Yep. Demisa, it is now your turn. Okay, um, okay, so what does it take to get ungrabbed? Um, so you're going to have to make an escape action, which will increase your multiple attack penalty, but it's either an unarmed attack, uh, an athletics or acrobatics. Okay, okay, okay. Hang on. I'm seeing what has the better. <laughs> um, I don't know if the attack actually has a better thingy, Bob. But what I'm going to do first is demoralize um, the Lin Arm. So I'm going to, uh, just to be safe, I hope, I'm going to use assurance on intimidation. Um, which will make it a 33. 33 no, it would just... be, it would be a 35. Sorry. Okay. 35. Yeah. You can intimidate it. Okay. Um, rad. And now I'm going to make, I guess, an unarmed attack for the first time in my, my life. Um, and, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, that's, I don't know, let's give that a go. 
Well. There's a reason I don't <laughs> punch. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <clears throat> so apparently, nope. I clipped my hand with my natural one on its turn. You will take one d8 persistent bleed damage. You will take one persistent bleed. Hey! <laughs> As you clip your hand on its tooth. Um, with no wait, no, it's that stress resistance thing wouldn't help me here. What is? No. <laughs> Just thought I'd check. Okay. Um. Okay, that went really badly. Mm. And um. Uh, okay. I mean. Haha! Uh-huh. First gonna go. That's two for my second attempt to be ungrabbed. Mm-hmm. Um So that's cool. And um, you know what? What the heck? Let's make third action, because I used hasted for the second one. Um is gonna be an athletics check. To get ungrabbed, gosh dang it. I'm not using the dice roller anymore. Oh my god. Oh, wait, 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 I have a reaction. I can use my dead sister to reroll. Hey. <laughs> Let's go, Jessica. I, I, well, I, know it's a, I, know, I know it's a ghost, but I like to think you just you just pull her out of your back pocket. Oh, of course. Just shake some bones. I rolled a, ri- a physical dice because I no longer trust the dice roller. It has come for violence. And I did roll above a two, so. This is what we call progress. 37. 37, 37 will be a success. Yes! Thank you, Green, for hasted. Thank you, Tashka, for giving me another chance. And screw you, Dice Roller, for the nat ones. Three of them. And one turn. And a two. My whole turn. That's all I did. It was wiggle. Joanna, it is now your turn. Breathing a smallest, just a smallest sigh of relief, seeing that Tamisa was able to break free. Um, I think I'm going to do first action is existing strike. Um, just to be on this. Plus 27, 34? Uh, 34 to hit. To hit. It does not hit. Cool. With exacting strike, I don't take the multiple attack penalty. At least after the first one. So I'm just going to strike again. Is that better? Uh, what was the number? Oh, I thought you said the number and you were like, that's better. And I was like, I didn't catch the number. No, no, that's better. Uh, uh, if so, let's do some math together, y'all. Uh, I'm doing math in the background for 41. 41 is going to hit. Hell yeah. For 16 slashing. Nope. Piercing. Nope. Slashing. Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't matter either way. Yeah. Um, and then I think last action, Joanna is going to, like, take out the shield. Okay. And then that is her turn, because she doesn't want to leave the grab one alone. Hi, right. and we will start with the ice, Lenore. Um, and let's see. Um, hey, Spalak, heads or tails? Aww. Heads. Okay, so it goes after Kite. <laughs> so no head? <laughs> no. It's exactly what it's doing. It's going for heads. Uh, so yeah, it is going to, for its first action, um, attempt to claw Kite. For a nat 20. <laughs> Wait, the linworm on kite or kite on the linworm? Uh, yeah, the linworm on kite. Oh dear. Uh, and the uh, 
The card is hamstring. It is normal damage. The target is knocked prone, and the target is also clumsy too until healed. So ah. there is that at least. It only does normal damage. I will take that card. I am so mad at the amount of fails and crit fails and crit successes these guys have had. <laughs> and falling damage. The uh, the dice roller is out for blood tonight. It just is. It, it knew that we were making fun in chat for like a week. We were like, haha, what if we die? Ooh. And they're like, yeah, what if you? <laughs> yeah, it's like, let's try that. Let's give it a go. You're talking some mad shit here. Fucking mad shit for someone in nat one range. <laughs> See, and it is going to follow that up with a jaw attack. Uh, and that is also going to be a success. Not a crit success, but a success. And Kite is going to take another 30 damage uh, and has to make that fortitude save. All right, Kite succeeds. Um, and let's see. Yep. Uh, and for its final action, it is going to lash its tail out at you, Groon. Uh, 31. Awesome. Um, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba -ba. okay. Um, yeah, we're going to do it this way. I'm going to use one action to give it to Relight first. Uh, so that way, um, she can do this really quickly, just in case we gotta, like, I don't know, do something else. Um, she will use her breath weapon. We are 10 feet in the air. This, like, since the beginning of the round, essentially, that was a part of our movement. So it shouldn't hit Groon, um, who is in range, but we're aerial, so are the Linworms, right? Yeah, or, I mean, or at that, least it, you're big enough to sense. get hit. Yeah, yeah. The idea is that Groon's Groon. in super Tiny. range right now um, mm -hmm. uh, for what I'm about to do on my, my, my full turn. So, <laughs> But she's short and she's on the ground. She's not getting hit. Um, I hope. And uh, I need reflex saves from both of them for Rosalite's um, breath weapon. The DC, I believe, is... The... Where is my... DC, I think it's 32. Um, I have a 33 and a 34. Damn, so they'll just take half um, damage. Ironically, I also rolled a 32 for the damage, uh, which is pretty nice, uh, but that's, that's half of that. So um, 16, uh, magical piercing, um, as they get sprayed with a bunch of pink crystals. And then, um, for my last two actions, it is my turn, the Shreya's turn. Um, and we are going to... I don't want to rely on another save from them, despite the massive amount of damage I could do. Actually, wait. Mm. So if I have a move where one of the effects is to forcibly push um, the enemies, does that provoke attacks of opportunity? for my allies? Um, I think only if it moves them out of their melee range. Uh, it depends on the exact move definition. Action. Mine doesn't because they have to take a move action specifically. They can't be moved by... Mm. Um, it's quite literally just... Mine is if it leads a square during a move action or makes a move action. So mine is straight up just it's pushed 10 feet away from me so that because that that by definition is forced movement um in 10 feet in a direction away from me so that's why i'm asking what y'all's attacks of opportunities sound um, like dragons included because the dragons are in melee range it wouldn't work for me unfortunately manipulate action or move action makes a range or leaves a square during a move action it's use. Yeah, yeah, that's what mine is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Rex doesn't have an attack of opportunity, uh, but Kites is exactly the same as. Uh, okay. Jonas. Okay. So then it, it wouldn't help. I'll just use my other one then. At 
I will use it at 6th level, actually. A Shadow Blast. Um, do, do, do. Just let me, let me grab all everything I need. I need to make the attack roll. Um, however, I'm going to do this as a 30-foot cone. So um, I will hit both Limwards and not Groon. <laughs> uh, I have a 41 and a 35. Um, they will regularly save. Uh, okay, and that's 34, uh, sorry, 35 points of fire damage. Um, as Estrella just pulls out her, her loot, grabs it with both hands, and makes, like, a swing, and it's just a, it's just a blast of this, of this dark-looking fire, this black fire, onto them. Wouldn't that cancel, wouldn't... Actually, no. I don't know what their what their vulnerabilities to, to fire actually looks like. Because that would have been funny if it just cancelled out their save. They did take some. Uh, so now it is Pictar. So please, just eat some popcorn. Oh wait, 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 wait. Let me let me reroll for a breath weapon here. Two two turns. So it spends a first action to move. You know what? He's just going to chuck some more pillars at people. Um, so he's going to chuck it at you, Estrella. No. Stop. Uh, Aubrey, I, have a, I have a question to try and spare ourselves. Uh, he used one action to move. Does he still have to sustain this? Because I think you mentioned like last time that he used an action to sustain the cloud. Yeah, yes, he did. So he used two actions. He can only throw one. Uh, uh, nice. Uh, and, and he just... chose pink. You're the closest, and you're making you're very very easy to spot. Um, and that is a thirty-four. Oh, that hits. Forty-six damage, and I need you oh. need Rosalite to make an acrobatics save to say stay in the air. Oh dear, oh dear. Let me let me just okay. make the let me make the save first uh, before I do anything. Um, I'm pretty sure Rosalite's. Pretty fucking decent at this, yeah. Um, I'm gonna use one of my hero points for this, mostly because I don't think that's enough. And I kind of need her to stay in the air right now. Okay. Um, oh, and plus one for me, 35. 35, 35 is gonna keep Rosalite in the air. Um, and I got pillar to the face. How much again? Uh, forty-six. Mm. Ow. Healed again. How's how's your health looking, Mistria? Um. Well, let me let me just let me give you an amount. How about I give you an amount? So um. Do 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 do. I'm so scared you're in the single digits, man. Uh, I'm almost in the single digits. Ah. ah. I'm actually um. Some may say three away uh, into uh, a single ah. digit. Ah. Oh no! Oh no! Mm -hmm. Wait, no, I'm not. I that's a physical. <laughs> physical, you got resistance. Oh, in. <laughs> so you're six away from the. Six. I'm six away, bitches. Hmm. Yes. Um. So now it is Kite's turn. So Kite is going to use first action to get up off the ground, which unfortunately will trigger the attack of opportunity on the Linorm. For a critical hit. I, I get That's a just a notification of your sadness. fucking AC kite. Sadness just poked a notification that says, Wow, the algorithm's broken. You rolled above a one. Let's fix that. And I'm like, Oh no, I see. I can tell when Aubrey gets a crit now. Yeah. For 90 damage. Oh dear. Wow. Kite is still standing, though. Not looking great. Aubrey, mm. please start rolling more nat ones. I'm begging mm. you. <laughs> so, um, but Kite gets her breath weapon back. And I'm going to roll physical dice for its reflex save. I'm channeling all my ba bad vibes to you, bestie. Mwah. Um, 
Let's see. With its... And with... It wasn't a one. It was a two. That's the power of my bad vibes, baby. <laughs> to be fair, I've actually also rolled a... I, I rolled a couple of ones there for Rex a minute ago. Um, that doesn't count. Yeah, That's on can. our side. I, um, so, yes. That is going to be a critical failure to dodge this breath weapon. Oh, no. What do you mean, for oh, the no? Linorm. Yes, yeah. Oh, the oh, enemy's not oh, dodging. Sorry, sorry. Okay. okay, never mind. For the sorry. I remember no. the 90 damage and thought it was still. Mm -hmm. Uh... So just obliterate it. I had to roll at 14d6 and then double it. Huh. Um, so, uh, you know, you watch as Kite uh, raises uh, and sort of lunges forward at this Linarm. Uh, and to, who had seen, uh, you know, I mean, honestly, this is this sounds like it, I think it ha has happened in most any Godzilla film. Uh, you know, it's just, the one I'm thinking of is the 2014 film, you know, near the end in that final fight where Godzilla like, grabs the thing and then just breathes fire yeah. down into it. And it's, it's it just throw. like that. Yep. And it's just kite, grabs it, wrenches open the jaws and just breathes fire into the Linorm uh, and is enough to kill it. Thank God. Oh, one down, let's go. And that is all of Kite's turn. Now it's the other Lorem's turn. Never. I just saw the uh, pop up for Frightened One and I was like, yeah, good, bitch. <laughs> um, and so, Joanna, uh, this one is going to lash out at you with a claw attack. Uh huh. No se puede. Or a 38. Damn it. Yeah, that hits. Wait, we're next to each other. It does not have to hit. Um, I mean, it still will. You just take the whatever, and I'll take the whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Let me give you... It's been a half a minute, so it's gonna be... Oh, oh, we're level 13 now, so 15 resistance to all damage against triggering a thing, and this guy is gonna be... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Enfeebled two. Nope, sorry. Stupefied two. If if they choose to to do the resistance route instead of not damaging Joanna. Me watching Aubrey add the stupefied values as you're talking, like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I figured, but you know. Uh, take thirty slashing damage from the claw. Is that already after the fifteen? Oh, that is not. So you would take okay. fifteen. Minus fifteen. Mm -hmm. Maybe also minus three from Australia. Yes. Minus 18. Yeah. Wait, uh, no. no. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, and then it's going to uh, follow the claw up with a uh, a jaw attack. 433? No, actually. Ha ha ha. Yeah. You can just... Thanks to the shield. Like, smell the acidic venom dripping off its teeth as it just snaps inches from your skin. Oh, it smells like fish sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, stinky. Um, and then it's going to lash out at Rex with its tail for its final action. Okay, now it rolls a one. I was like, I don't think it's possible for these things to roll one. They rolled a one Good. now. I really oh, just said, have bad oh. luck, bestie, and I manifested it instantly. That's just how it be. <laughs> um... And they will be overextending themselves, and they trigger reactions as if it had used a move action. <laughs> ah! Let's I, I go. want to go. <laughs> Would you like to go first, Joanna, since you were being attacked? Sure. I'm gonna use a hero. It's quick. A little. Uh, that's much better. That is going to be a 38. A 38? 38 is going to hit? Hell yeah. I rolled a 42 to hit also with my reaction. 42. Oh wait, no, I can't I use my reaction. Dang it. I'm doing oh. it. Never mind. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I do 16 damage. Good, good, good. 
Uh, okay. Uh, Tamsin, it's now your turn. Yes, I am going to use Reach Spell and then cast Blood Feast on it. Which, ooh, okay, that is a... 41 to hit. The Linor? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, it hits. Okay, where is Foundry? I found it. So, horrifyingly, like, Tamsin's neck sort of stretches around the pillar, and then her head splits in half, and she trips on the Linarm for 38 damage, and I get half of that back as temp HP. And Wait, that's yes. the turn. Tamsin's feeling the munchies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Mary. Uh, hi, I have another question, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing ranged attacks against a creature from behind, and there's like people in melee in front, can you get flat-footed bonuses, flanking bonuses, or no? Do you have to gain melee range? Um, I do believe you have to be in melee range. That is unfortunate. Follow-up question. For the statue that's kind of in my way, is it actually physically in my way? Is it tall enough to be in my way? I would say, yeah, because this thing, this thing is like, unless you're going like... This, this is a pretty large statue. Let's... It's already off the ground a little bit, so it's probably about 30, 40 feet up. That's fine. I feel like I can cut over here with like half my movement so I don't trigger attacks and then just start wailing on it. Which is what, what I'll do. What attacks? Up opportunity. I don't know I if think, it has them, or if I'm in its I, range or not. You, you. I am within thirty feet. It, I actually. think it's already spent its attack of opportunity this round. I don't remember. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't I'm, 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 I'm the, other one, you, you, the other one you, did. The other one did. The dead one. The other one did. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this one. I think you may just be barely out of its range for its. Uh, I am within um, thirty feet. So I'm not... 25 feet. 25 feet is the max range it has. Okay, I'm exactly 28 feet away, which is really funny mathematically. Mm. So I'm going to just move just to be careful anyways, just half mm. my speed, because I don't need to move that far. This is the exact square, and I'm going to... I'm exactly 30 feet away. Or I'm 28 feet away. I'm going to Stunning Strike Floria blows it. Let's go. Let's punch it. Let's commit an act of violence. We are nearing on our next hero point too, so I'm just like sweating. No, we have the, the hero point now. Uh, it's like nine fifty almost. We have it. I have the exact time, but yeah, like I'll I'll take it to give it to me a few minutes early. But hold on, let me just do. Uh... Let me roll first and see. I do still have one hero point left, so it should Let's use the power of Astrea and the Delilah dice. That is a natural 19 for a total mm -hmm. of, like, 45. 45 will hit. Is not a crit. I hate you. It's okay. AC is 36. Ah! <laughs> yep. That's just psychic damage It'd right there. It'd be, uh, 37 if, uh, it wasn't, uh, frightened, I think. Or, yeah, frightened. <laughs> Sits down. This is fine. What do you roll? Yeah, you do have to roll a fortitude save for me. As I do fucking shit damage. That is 11 points of budgeting damage. <laughs> That's a nat 20 for a 47 for fortitude. I think God doesn't like me today, but I get a second attack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I I think that that's a 37, actually, so that will hit. It will. Barely. Come on, dice, do the thing. That is 13 bludgeoning, so 24 bludgeoning with iron fist, iron, cold iron fist punch in total. <clears throat> How would you like to take it out? Yes. Fuck yeah! Thanks, <laughs> So I am using Wildwood Stance, which has all the pretty little flower petals. I want to hit it on its head, and I want to do the same thing that I did last time with, like, big exploding petals, where they just kind of blow up on its face and it heals over. And it's very pretty and fancy and flowery. Okay. Her, her, her. 
Yep. It was the cold iron that pushed you over the edge to be able to kill it. <gasps> Thank you. Nice. Fist of cold iron. I, Groon, it is now your turn. I do have a third action, actually. Oh, you do have a third action. <laughs> I do have a third action. Uh, I am going to just not go into melee range with God yet, because that's a terrible idea Probably on my own. a terrible idea. <laughs> Why don't you just get in front of me, though? That would be great. Oh, my God. I don't have a lot left, and you'll lose all your buffs if I go down. Just hiding behind the I'll, statue of the I'll thing. navigate right around here, just so I'm like... Hold on, let me do some math real quick. Yeah, I'll navigate right around here, so I'm a bit closer. I have a good amount of health, and uh, I don't have a lot of health, actually, but I'm, I'm the closer target now, and I did just murder one of his things, so uh, fingers crossed. I do. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's that. Hey, everybody. Aubrey here with a fun little announcement. Uh, Goblets and Gaze is now an affiliate over at Adventure Dice. And we know how much we all love those math rocks. So if you need some new math rocks in your life, go over to adventuredice.ca and in the checkout code, enter our promo code Goblets for 10% off. But also they have dice, they have other TTRPG accessories and tabletop goodies, dice trays, uh, condition rings, and things like that, little spell casting stuff. Great stuff there. Go check them out uh, and support our show. Thank you. Be gay. Roll dice. An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.